me Someday I would buy Galleys with good oars And sails to distant shores Stand up high in the proud Hello and welcome to the People's Third Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of February 16th, 2021. Today, um, I actually have a few clips I'm going to be throwing in from the app I use called TikTok. I'm sure you've all heard of it. What I have to throw in is actually, I believe, is a bit relevant to what I have to say. One of them is called uh, News in a Minute. It's actually pretty informative. And then one of them is, okay, sort of a comical skit of supposedly one of uh, the terrorists defense attorneys trying to fight a case it's sort of funny i think you find it funny and then the other one is a bit more informational and i'll throw those in actually let's put that right now i'll put them in right now for you guys i'll be right back Hey everybody, welcome to In A Minute News. In breaking news, the NAACP has sued Donald J. Trump and Rudy Giuliani. The federal lawsuit, which was filed this morning, alleges Trump and Giuliani, along with the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, conspired to incite the violent attack on the Capitol to prevent Congress from certifying the presidential election. Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced plans to create a 9-11 type commission to investigate the attack on the Capitol. President Biden will support such a commission. 11 family members of Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger wrote him a disturbing handwritten letter due to his vote to impeach Donald Trump, saying in part he is a disappointment to his family and to God and has joined the quote, devil's army end quote. And nearly 53 million COVID vaccines have been administered in America. I hope you guys enjoyed the news in a minute. Now here's the one for the supposable defense attorney, the comic skit basically, for the terrorists who attacked the Capitol on January 6th. Your Honor, do we know for certain that it was my client that raided the Capitol? Yeah, he filmed himself. Oh. <laughs> Be that as it may, uh, it, the doors were open. Uh, it's almost like he was invited to come inside. He smashed a window and then crawled in. It's on the film. Okay, um, it's on what film? <laughs> the film he taped himself. We just talked about this. <laughs> and now here's the one that's a bit informational for you, but actually is, more, is quite accurate. Against a mass immigrant invasion threatening your livelihood. Come on. The real danger came from putting a recklessly uneducated man with a personality disorder in the White House who spent his one catastrophic term branding America's democratic cities enemies of the country while taking credit for economic growth rates he inherited from a Democrat. He and his Republican Senate, under the smokescreen of your disassociation from reality and the brand name Drain the Swamp, filled the cabinet with profiteers like themselves. Billionaires made a trillion bucks while they gutted our State Department, our FBI, our CIA, our DHS, our post office. Whatever Trump touched, he wrecked. They attacked our U.S. education system. They tore down the minimal regulations that we have protecting America's water and air. They turned our already abysmal borders into a human rights crisis. They smeared America's top scientists. And on with our wonderful stimulus program. Today actually meets a milestone um, in our journey together since we actually began almost 11 months ago. Diarist says that all of the stimulus checks the, from the CARES Act and the current act, the current bill that Donald Trump signed before his uh, leaving office have all been sent out. And if uh, basically all the checks are in the mail, that's what they said. This way they can actually put all their attentions on the current tax season but they said they'll be more prepared for when if if and when there's a third stimulus check that we all hope there will be the fourteen hundred dollar one that would be coming from the current um bill that is being written up written up by the budget committee before it goes back on the floor of the house and gets voted on then it goes on to the senate and gets voted on by them and as you know, on that part of it, though, we do know that um, Schumer 
as the Senate Majority Leader, is going to try to use reconciliation on this because basically we know the Republicans really don't want to work with him on this because they say the $1.9 trillion bill is a bit expensive. Well, compared to the fact that the CARES Act was $2.2 trillion and this is only like $1.9 trillion, I don't really think that's that bad. But the Biden administration has announced an extension to the foreclosure moratorium. So there's basically those people that are actually right back getting foreclosed on for their mortgage and stuff like this. It has been extended. So instead of it ended on March, at the end of March of this year, it's going to end in June of this year. This foreclosure does not mention anything about the eviction ban. So those people out there renting, they can still get evicted. They probably still get evicted, but... For now, the eviction ban is basically good in place until the end of March. But hopefully they're going to vote on this bill, hopefully before the middle of March, and get it passed so the eviction ban can be uh, extended. And if they don't include it in this stimulus package because of some reason or another, Biden says he is going to actually try to pass it as a standalone bill or an executive action. And if you've been following me for long enough, then you know that... I've been talking a lot about the $15 an hour minimum wage increase and how I've mentioned about how Joe Manchin says that $15 an hour is too much money, $11 an hour should be more sufficient. And then also Chris, Kirsten Cinema also saying that the $15 an hour minimum wage increase has nothing to do with the current um, pandemic and that's why she doesn't support it either. Surprisingly, John Cotton and Mitt Romney introduced a bill uh, comparing the minimum wage increase, comparing the minimum wage increase with what's currently on there, this bill would basically gradually increase the federal minimum wage following the end of the pandemic, and they try to either tie it with cost of living increases or inflation, instead of having to pass a bill every time they want to increase the minimum wage. This way, stating basically that if the minimum wage went up because of uh, cost of living, then that'd be good, or the same thing as far as inflation goes. And I think this is how it should have been set in the first place, because I remember when I was actually a younger kid, and I could see candy bars for like 50 cents, and now I go out there and I see the same candy bar for a dollar fifty more. I mean, I grant you most people going to say, well, that's because of inflation, but it's not also just that either. I mean, come on, everyone knows when you're, when you're a kid, you have sticky fingers and you like to steal shit. And that's why also the prices are going up as well is because of theft. Because the market has to cover their loss. So we're hoping that basically the inflation or the cost of living will help jack up our minimum wage at the end of the pandemic. If Mitt Romney and Joe Cotton, sorry, John Cotton gets their bill passed through. Otherwise, I don't think Joe Man, uh, sorry, you know, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. Will actually be voting on the stimulus package because I think they're going to be two that actually kill it. And the funny thing is, they're Democrats and they could possibly kill it. But that is actually the end of my program for right now. So I hope you guys have actually enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really love to have a thumbs up. Drop me any comments you want, I'll answer them. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and get more earfuls of my wonderful information for you guys. Until next time, you guys have a wonderful evening. I'll broadcast again to you guys tomorrow. Bye.